the computer and let you do what you want. Okay. Good morning, everyone. We are glad to be here today because um, today is the day that the Lord has made. We'll rejoice and be glad in him and the gifts that he gives us. So let us gather in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have protected us through the night from harm and danger. And we would, and we ask you to preserve and keep us this day also from all sin and evil, that in all our, our thoughts, words, and deeds, we may serve and please you. Into your hands we commend our bodies and soul and all that is ours. Let your holy angels have charge of us, that the wicked one have no power over us. Amen. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O God, that we may rejoice and be glad all of our days. Praise to the blessed and holy Trinity, one God who gives us life, salvation, and resurrection. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship and praise. Be still and know that I am God. So we have for our Mockingbird devotional, I think it's on the, today, the, on the 21st of September, um, a devotion by Peter Moore, and the text is from Romans chapter 5. Um, for those of you who don't like Paul, someday I'll get you. <laughs> and then we'll work on the Psalms, and you like the Psalms too. <laughs> so Romans chapter 5, 1 through 5. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings. Maybe you won't like this one, but whatever. More than that, we will rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces hope and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, which has been given to us. In his autobiography, Days of Grace, tennis champion Arthur Ashe wrote, I have always been a firm believer in the therapeutic value of adversity. Of all people, athletes much, must reach an accommodation with losing and learn to make the best of it. Ash died, died of AIDS, received through an injection given by a tainted needle. He wrote his story knowing that he was leaving behind fame, fortune, and a lovely family. For every Olympic athlete we watch as, we, as they receive their gold medal, there are thousands of others who almost made it but didn't. I was present when the, a friend lost his chance of going to the 1964 to Tokyo Olympics by a hair. His non-Christian father was mortified at his failure, but my friend grew through it into a strong servant of Christ. Compare that with the sign on the walls of the Princeton University Boathouse. Show me a good loser, and I'll show you a loser. The secular mind dismisses the therapeutic value of adversity as weakness. But Paul invites us in Romans 5 to stand in a different place, a place of grace. In this place, we discover a past in which we are at peace with God, a present in which we have full access to his mercy, and a future hope in sharing in his glory. But these gifts are what were won at the cost of suffering, namely Christ's, and may remain ours as we rethink the role of suffering in God's world. Looking at verses three and four, suffering has such a therapeutic role in our lives that rightly received, it enables us to endure the present while looking in hope for the future. This, says Paul, is the root of character, something that is always hammered out on the anvil of pain. Fortunately, we do not have to gut this out as if we were, it were up to us to manufacture character with steely determination. There is a waterfall of love cascading down our heads, which turns character building into spontaneous excitement and suffering into joy. Hmm. I like where, where he goes with this, because oftentimes when we talk about we rejoice in suffering, what some people do is like, well, then I better go and suffer even more. I need to look for suffering so that I can be... Um, kind of that anvil in the, I can be forged um, stronger through my suffering. I can be made stronger. I can 
um, live life more fully if I've just suffered a little bit. While suffering does produce character and does drive us, lead us, um, guide us to Christ and Christ's promises of resurrection after suffering and death, um, that's not the way it works. God, I'm going to go out and try to suffer more and make my life miserable so that I can receive God's goodness and grace. That is called a negative theology of the cross or, or a theology of glory, glorifying in my own suffering. We don't need to seek out suffering, do we? We don't need to um, try to build character. We might know the longer we live that the places where we do tend to grow and our character does tend to develop its nuances and um, quirkiness and resiliency through suffering, that is nothing we sought out. It's consequences of life, decisions, um, accidental, just the reality of life and love and living and learning will create moments of suffering. We don't want young people to seek it out or to go, great, gain character because we know it will eventually find them. And so the impulsivity of youth or middle age and wanting to have that great love or the meaningful career or sometimes the meaning does come because once it's lost, we realize how great it was or we've lost something else and we realize how important what we have taken for granted is. There's nothing that God wants us to run out and find because it will it will come. And while that might seem like a comment of despair, it's just a comment of life, isn't it? Um, we've been praying for people in this group since we began in the very early days of the pandemic. Um, and some of those stories have had glorious, amazing growth and community developed because of prayer, because of adversity, because of accident and circumstance. And then the witness is so powerful and strong, not because they sought out suffering, but because in the midst of suffering, especially because Christ also has suffered for us, there is hope for the present and the future. There is joy in the daily life that we have, especially as we understand more how tenuous life is. There is an, an appreciation and a reveling in what we have now. So our stories of, you know, are from Arthur Ashe and the adversity that he went through as he wrote his memoir as he was dying from AIDS given to him by a tainted needle and he's leaving behind everything and yet that adversity and may help them understand the 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 giftedness that he had all the days of his life up until the very end and also what we view as failure or loss in athletics is one thing or if you don't get the job or if you don't get the house or if you don't the relationship fails is it are you a loser like the princeton um boathouse says that if you a good loser is still a loser and we want winners here i mean that gets you through things we talked to you on tuesday about um high achievement and what it leads to despair and anxiety but there's also sometimes where eliteness whether elite um athletes um, other people in our lives, or even just when you're at the prime of your life, understanding that losing means a death, means an end, but that God will resurrect, that there will be a new life that comes out of this. That's the life we live as Christians. We live a life where there'll be lost things, lost ones, lost opportunities, but then there'll be from that loss and the lostness 
we will be found and we will be given new life. So that is the place we stand as Christians. We stand in grace upon the suffering of Christ for us so that we share in, in the benefits of his suffering, knowing that he is active giving mercy and future hope to us now so that when we are in adversity, we can live in hope knowing that we will not be here forever, that God is active and working in our lives, that we can endure the present because of that hope. And as we are forged and given character, um, that God's love rains down upon us and gives us new life each and every day, each and every death, each and every um, loss, will be accompanied by a resurrection. Thanks be to God. Be still and know that I am God. Such good news for us in the midst of loss and suffering that God will get us to resurrection. The be still is a reminder that the action is God's. You have been born anew through the living and abiding word of God. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation. We give thanks for resurrection, that the resurrection does dawn in our lives, um, not just once in our baptisms, not just twice in our deaths, but throughout our lives, that, that those resurrection moments do come, Lord. And for that, we have hope in the present challenges and chances of life. For the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness, we pray. Lord, we ask that you continue to heal the bodies and minds and souls of ourselves and all who we care for and even those we don't care for much. May they be healed by your, your word, by you working in and through the different ways that you work through um, the people around us and through people's vocations. And may that gift of forgiveness also allow for new life to come in us. For the gifts of relationships with others, Lord, in um, we ask that you are in the relationships um, in this new school year, between teacher and student, um, it's hard to have a relationship of mutual respect these days. And we ask that you gift our teachers and administrators and other um, support staff in our schools um, with the giftedness that relationships can be. Um, bend our youth to respect and for care and help to create places where they can also see the giftedness of the and the gifts of the people around them that they can grow and have their worlds opened up a little bit by their classmates by their the adults in their lives by the experiences that they have before them and help parents and grandparents and everybody surrounding our kids in the community um, in those support relationships um, so that they also flourish in this time of busy schedules and coming back to the fullness of a week and a day. For the communion of faith in your church, we continue to ask that you forgive us where we fall short, that you um, gather us in, that you call upon us to um, contribute to be present, to serve, to be aware and empathetic of one another. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world, heal the hurts of all your children, and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially we pray for those who govern nations of the world. We pray for President Biden and Vice President Harris. We pray for all of those who serve in our country whether it's in elected ways or in our military or in our local communities. We pray for the, the leaders of our world. We pray for the 
the gathering of church leaders at, for the um, Lutheran World Federation that was in Poland this last week, and the way that we are a church together. And we ask that you continue to um, bring your light of peace and hope into our weariness. For the people in countries ravaged by strife or warfare, we ask that you are there not just in the initial needs of rebuilding or coming, but in the long-term exhaustion and perseverance that's needed, the perseverance that's needed in long-term recovery and that sustainability part. We ask for not just a meal for today, but a meal for the next year. We ask not just for a Band-Aid, but a, a treatment and a cure for access to the care that's needed. We ask for not just no a ceasefire for the day, but for peace for tomorrow as well. And for all of those who work for that peace and international harmony, Lord, we give thanks and we we ask that you bless them in their sometimes thankless work. For all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction, we rejoice. And for the Church of Jesus Christ in every land, Lord, we ask that you continue to gather us in, that you help our our um, our song weave together in joy, and that you are able to be in our midst today and always. Almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome in adversity. And all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us this day. Amen.